uh, D5 John, if you follow him on Twitter, uh, he's going to be the moderator for the plugin community. Um, and he's got some really special insights, uh, how that's affecting XDC and how it's going to be built out. So um, anyway, want to want to have good people on here, want to have uh, insightful discussions about, you know, where the space is progressing uh, and how this technology is actually going to change industries. And so, uh, John, if you want to give us a little background on yourself and how you got involved with the community, and then uh, we can get into the meat and potatoes of uh, Plugin and XDC. Yeah, absolutely, Jake. Thanks for having me on. Um, so for me, it was um, about 2017. It was, as, as yourself, I know you're a big family and interest person yourself. So it was my brother who tried getting me into... Um, a lot of the blockchain crypto community before with XRP. He was he was in the gym, you know, is 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 like me. We we like our, our exercise and our gym time, and he was in the gym and he was following it on his phone. And obviously, XRP ripped, and he was you know he was trying to buy it like a month before. I just didn't get it, and I'm the tech. I'm more of the tech brother than he is, and uh, from there then he was like pretty obsessed with it, and he was like this is this is a fit this is a thing, and it's a genuine thing, and. Um, he really, really saw the use case and his background is like um, business, you know, he's, he's really, really switched on with finance, everything like that. And mine wasn't. So I was like, I didn't really know what it was on about. And I was like, I, I, I don't, it's not, like I didn't get it. It just wasn't my interest as much. And then um, obviously I, we invested then I invested, sort of followed it, but I wasn't like immediately sold. It was about um, two and a, two and a half years ago when I started getting into notes. Okay. And uh, th that's when the technology hit me. And people say for it, you know, I'm here for the tech, but I, I was gem I'm genuinely here for the tech. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I'm I one of them people, you know, I'm here. For, that's why I'm here. I love the I love the community. I love the tech. The the amount I've learned over this new unique space in the last two years is probably more than I've learned seven years of doing you know what would be traditional like network you know network stuff because it's very much you know it doesn't change as as much. It's more. Um, you're copying what somebody else has done and, and you're doing this. Whereas this is all absolutely brand new. And then um, I remember following Chainlink uh, when that started, sort of started that off. That was my I, first ever investment. I, I didn't Chainlink. invest. I didn't invest. Oh. I, didn't. <laughs> I know I missed out. And, and, and then that led me and I thought, okay. And then ETH and as much as ETH, you know, um, when obviously we we sort of whether we're in a bull or not is a bit of contentious issue at the moment. Um, I think we are in like a what I call a, like a stealth bull, but I think we're in very uncharted territory with the market at the moment. There's nothing's working as to plan or to any any graph or TA. So mm -hmm. I don't think anyone knows what's going on, but it's good for people still because there's excitement um, and the halving coming up and everything else. But yeah, moving back. So yeah, I was chain link and yeah, again, it was the tech. It was the Oracle tech that really interested me and, how it was working and I didn't invest at the time wasn't as, as financially um, sound and it was, wasn't in my uh, just not in my remit but it got me interested and then XDC came came along and I managed to get in understanding understanding that and then again my brother trade finance and from then this uh, company started called plugin and I was like and I remember when the Twitter literally started you're talking like a few hundred followers mm -hmm. and uh it just came about and he goes, we're going to be a decentralized Oracle. And you know, when people, people come on Twitter or some at starts, you think, oh, are you going to be something, you know, is this, and then I did my little bit of research and I saw this civic group of like companies who's been in uh, banks, uh, business and partnerships. I thought this ain't just, um, you know, the stereotypical or oh, a few guys in, you know, in the room starting some out. These are like established That's international good. business people. You know, with money, I was like, "Oh, wait a minute! This is this this could be something." And um, I was lucky enough to put in for. You know, I was really excited. It was it was XDC, which I was sort of interested in, and then it was a technology that I was very interested in. So all of a sudden, I am I'm one of these people. I dive in 110 percent into something when I find it, and from there, I was like, "Okay." And they ran this competition of, "Oh, you could win like um, X amount of tokens." Um, just put your name in sort of thing. You know, th them things are on X or Twitter, whatever you want to call it, um, all the time. Yep. And I was like, there's no way I'm get getting one. Luckily, my first ever nerd, and I don't think I've shared this on a thing yet, but my first ever nerd, I did get 80% off. And at the time, when it launched on Bitru, um, the price was about $1.20, I think it was, because it was like, we was we was deep in bull cycle. So 
Price is then like one dollar twenty. If you look at it now, well, I think we're at like um, four four cents or something. Yeah, way like. down from way down, <laughs> way down. Which which is you know it's it's been for the bear as you know ninety ninety five percent is going to be wiped. It's it's genuinely a thing for those who have been through like I said twenty seventeen. I've seen I've seen the cycles. Um, so I'm I'm a less less emotional about them now um, <laughs> than I was the first time. But yeah, from then. It was technology opportunity, and I think all them things aligned for me. And then my background um, in like genuine networking, I mainly, you know, I do like defensive um, infrastructure and attack and defend of networks, which would be like blue red teaming and setting up infrastructure. So for me, I looked at that and I thought, wait a minute, this this is something. And then I all of a sudden had eight percent of a nerd, and I'm like, well, I've got to get one right. And then from there, it was new. There was there was problems. There was issues. Um, when the first V1, there was installation issues. It wanted a sleek. And then a small group of us got together. And yet again, a brilliant XTC community got together um, and managed to assist the team. And from there, became part of more consulting and helping the team. That's you know? Awesome. Yeah, and it's just that, that natural, organic, you know, I'm – talking to somebody on my phone to helping Ryan code to joining a GitHub to the next thing or doing a lot more than what I thought I was and learning as well. I mean, I learned like um, I was okay with, with the nodes used to be on Docker, right? And it was just a literally one click, um, which a massive help for um, Nazman is NMZN. Do you know him on Telegram, Twitter? Have you seen him? XTCEU pretty much. If you want to, if you go next XTCEU now he is. And um he helped me a lot with the Docker scripts and we just helped just to help people install it and, and help it get going. And I've never experienced that from working where I work with, with, with corporate or business or institutions. It's always uh, you try to get anything changed or regulatory things through or, or even a line of code. It's, it's you're talking months and you're talking yeah. reviews and you're talking um, very, very complicated to be able to change the same thing. And they were like, yeah, go ahead. You know, yeah, if it works, we'll test it. And from there, become more part of, you know, more part of the team, more of a, a deeper moderator, validator, node operator, and, you know, help testing and build out this network, which is now we know as Go Plugin uh, PLI. Yeah. So, you know, I made a video on this not too long ago. I became aware of it. I, I think that oracles are going to be huge. And, and for those that are watching this for the first time, you don't know what an oracle is. Uh, it's basically what allows information that's in the real world to be brought on chain. It, it's a data aggregator and it, it allows that to be used by a smart contract on chain. So all the smart contracts are going to have to have an Oracle that translates data, right? Uh, unless that the information that they're aggregating and using in the smart contract was all on chain previous, which is highly unlikely, especially for real world applications. So we've got XDC, which is trade finance. Uh, and in order to tokenize, the documents and the transactions and create smart contracts to facilitate that and create efficiencies for that use case have to have a plugin. Oh, I mean, an Oracle. <laughs> Oracle yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I think people, um, um, it's like the value of data as well, like isn't really spoken about. And I've, I've said this a few times on my um, post and I stand by the data is digital gold. It's like, I think don't think people realize every day, you, you know, you go into your, to give an easy example, you go into your car, you use your mobile, you pull up like Google Maps or something, and you just click a map and you use a sat nav without thinking. But when that map loads, that's pulling an API, you know, an application plugin interface from Google to load that map on your mobile. And that's data. That's a hit of data. That's that sourcing, trying to find where your location is from your GPS. All this is data. And at the moment, as you, as you can tell, like it's not on chain. So people just think, well, what's the so what? Like, why why do I need it on data? Like, why do I need my own chain? Um, can't I keep this separate? And of course you can. But what you're doing is you're not enabling your data to be smart. You're not enabling your data to be like dynamic, to be able to react to situations. And I'll give you a really good example. They've got um, they've got an, an app that they're releasing a uh, plugin that they were testing it, one of these Sky apps. And what it does is, when you're very simple, when your plane's delayed, you're stood in an airport and you, everyone gets plane insurance, right? And if you travel a lot, I'm sure you yourself do. I mean, it's, it's a nightmare, isn't it? But 
you get delayed. And normally it's not a great process. Now it depends on which service you go with, but normally your plane is delayed, you put in a claim, they'll fight you forever for it anyway, and they tend to give you a voucher, which wasn't the amount that you yeah, even... Never. Yeah, no, never get, you never get every, you know, it's always, a, it's like a compromise. It's like you, you're going to court with them instead of instead of just saying, look, I just want my money back. I couldn't get my flight that you were offering. Um, so they actually built an app. And what it does is the smart contract will read your flight times and pull that data through. Now, if you're supposed to get your flight at eight o'clock and it's delayed by 8.15, depending on which smart contract or how much you've, you know, put into that to offset your insurance, before it literally has come on the board in the airport, when that information is released, the money's already in your account. Oh, it's dude. already been paid. Do you know, it's, it's just done. There's no there's no middleman. You can cut down that friction. The data is there. It's available. And that's a really simple. And these are what I call like simplistic smart contracts. You know, it's just like, that's just like a really simple, useful, intuitive way to just go, I don't have to argue with a person. I don't need to ring up and stay on a line for 20, 30 minutes. If it's delayed, the data is pulled through on the board in the airports. So that API is pulled in by GoPlugin through an Oracle node put in on chain, straight to your app, straight to your wallet, XTC wallet, say decent wallet, and your XTC is back in your wallet. So you've already got your insurance and you, you delay all your flight back. Done. That's such a fantastic example and use case for this. I've, so I flew to Dubai last year, used American Airlines, I bought the insurance and um, they gave me a voucher, but I have to use it out of that same exact airport. Yep. Um, and it's got to be on a return flight. And to your point, I paid a certain amount for the flight. They're they're willing to honor it for like a third. Yeah, exactly. And it has to be used for the same like cabin part. It can't be like if I flew business, I can't fly economy. If I fly economy, I can't transfer it to first class. I'm like, this is garbage. I don't, you know, there's got to be a better way for this. So if if that solves that friction and it's in that use case, I think that that you know that's probably a billion dollar company that just for that specific use case i think a lot of people would pay you know whatever small amount of insurance that is just for the ease of transfer if there was a delay or a cancellation for a flight exactly that and at the moment we are you know we're very early and people say oh we're early in this space and i mean like to smart contracts to apply to your everyday life um i think a lot of things that need to happen first is like Smart devices are obviously in your house. Um, IoT devices will have to increase because they these are going to be what are going to be like the natural triggers, you know, things that change that have to be recorded. Um, at the moment, it's getting that system embedded, say, in like in the UK, I use I use an app normally called like Skyscanner and I'll book most of my flights through Skyscanner. It just aggregates flights for me. And um, once that gets, once one of them companies makes it into, you know, mainstream, um, without even thinking. So you don't even have to buy the crypto. You know, this is a thing right. you can have, you can just pay, you pay your dollars or your pounds and then it gets converted. You know, it can have an auto smart contract again, working through somebody's decks, maybe like Globians or XSwap, you know, one of the XDC decks and that, that'll convert the dollar straight into the, straight into the token, tokens done, converts all the way back. Do you know what I mean? Even a stable coin. And the great thing about that is, I think the, when the integration hits that level, and that's what I mean, that's not simple now. That's like what would be a complex system of smart contracts. Um, when we hit that level, it'll be seamless. And that's when it'll really take off because at the moment we're still in its infancy of, you know, you've got to have a crypto wallet and you've got to have keys and you've got to have, you know, all these things that's fine for somebody who's tech savvy or thing, right. but most people, you know, simplicity wins. Most people like, I don't carry a wallet with me now. I carry my phone. Right. Well, and, and the banks have already adopted these digital wallets. They've changed mm. your account to a digital wallet. So the, the infrastructure is being built. You've got Medico and other uh, custody providers that are enabling uh, custodial solutions for digital assets in banking infrastructure. And it's going to have to be integrated with stuff that people already use, right? A lot of people, you know, if, if you're creating an account on something now, most of the time it'll ask for your Facebook or your Google account, right? And then it just because there's a ton of people that already have that. It makes that process easy. So your point to get mass adoption for this, there needs to be a user interface that people are used to dealing with that allows the integration through an API, like you talked about on the phone, that calls this, you know, technology. And um, and people don't care. 
<laughs> the no, masses no, don't, don't care how this is done. It as quick. No, that's the thing. And that's yeah. what people like. I know we get excited for it because we're in this mind, you know, we're in this mindset and, and we're part of that. And people say like 99% of people don't know this. I'm like 99% of people don't want to. They don't. They just want to go about their lives. They just want to get up in the morning and they want to get a flight. And if it's delayed, they just want the money. And and if you can introduce a system, they don't want all the tech guy. You know, I'm, I'm a tech person, so they don't want me talking. They just want a normal person to turn around to them and go, hey, yeah, if you if you book that flight and you pay like 2% of your flight and it's delayed, you're going to get you're going to get your flight back or you know, or an NFT for a voucher, maybe at one point, but it, they won't know it's an NFT. No. They don't need to know. It'd just be a ticket. Like when you get your yeah. plane ticket now, like every plane ticket could be an NFT. But you don't have to call it an NFT. You just say, look, yeah, you've got a plane ticket and you need this app. And people go, okay. Do you know, you just log into your British Airways app for us and then it's just there. And, it, you know, I mean, NFTs now are spinning round. I think it's just a thing, right? But you, you, you have your, your British Airwave flight with your QR code on it. And that's linked to the chain. That's linked to you. Yeah. Done. Do you know what I mean? And that's linked to all these other, like I said, and that's the what I call the layering of complex smart contracts. So that's linked to that, linked to your insurance, linked to your health, linked to everything, you know, and it's all about linking and accessible data. And uh, obviously the pioneer of that at the moment in web two is obviously your Google, mm -hmm. which controls, like you said, you can log in for your Google account. Of course you can, because most people click Google account and click your thumbprint. Yeah. It's biometrics. And there you go. I, I mean, I can't I can't remember one of the last times I've actually had to put my all my details in. Well, you know what I mean? Like, there, there's other doing. cases like that. So we're we're looking to create a an AML KYC accreditation passport uh, that's yeah. accessible across marketplaces, right? So every time you go to verify information, uh, the current regulation requires that each individual that you're participating with holds that information for a certain period of time and re-verifies it on a certain cadence. Um, you know, and, and depending on the jurisdiction that you're in again, but if all that's automated and you just, you know, sign your thumbprint and it shares whatever information they need and that only the information they need also, that would yeah, be the other isn't. benefit. Cause yeah, right I now think, I think that's the fear, isn't it? That's the fear. Um, the ability to, um, tech too much data. Mm -hmm. And we've seen that with courts and, you know, like the normal, like I say, what I call web two, like Facebook, um, Google, you've seen it in courts with the data breaches. And obviously EU is now pushed into the last few years GDPR, which has cut down on a lot of practices and made it very difficult. I mean, it's a barrier, so it makes it a lot more difficult for people to obtain the right data they need. And I'm not talking about like malicious data or things like that. No. I'm talking about just genuine, like I need to do marketing. It's become, it's become a very difficult process. And, and there's a money barrier to that now. There's a big money barrier to that. Well, and it's good and bad. I, I think people should be able to share the data that they want and then, but, but also be compensated if they're going to share that data, right? And I think that's really the premise of Web3 is you own your data and you're able to share it as needed uh, based on your, you know, either being compensated for it or who you're transacting with and exactly what they need to see. So um, let's get into, into plugin, man. What What is the project for people that don't know and where is it headed? And how do you think it will change the landscape for XDC uh, and Zenfin moving forward? Yeah, so um, plugin or P so it's, it's tickers PLI. Um, the proper company is um, at Go Plugin. For those who want to check it out on Twitter or X, but um, what Go Plugin is for those who know Chainlink, um, another Oracle service that's based on Ethereum. Um, what Go Plugin's idea was that they forked um, Ethereum. For those who don't know what that means, it means you get a a part of a code and you then you use that code in a different way that's not that's not the same as the original so it's like a it's like a clone but what you can do with that is then once you've cloned it you can then edit it that doesn't change the original one so when pli changes now moving forward chain link won't change in regards they can still use base code from there and um, because it's all open source which is fantastic yeah, again i have absolutely the utmost respect for the chain link and the whole community because without that plugin wouldn't be here or if they did it'd be very very difficult to get that market penetration and company where they are today um so the whole point of it was that xdc as you know we mentioned um xdc trade finance and being able to put data on chain now you can use um an oracle that's not based on your network because you can wrap tokens that's what a wrap token is for those who don't know normally a wrap token is you have one network and then you wrap that token which means you're pretty much write it to work on the other network 
and it moves across networks like that, meaning that all the benefits and drawbacks of that network, the wrapped token will inherit. Um, so plugin saw a need that the price and speed of Chainlink for XDC and what it needed to achieve wasn't sufficient. Right, um, right. Obviously, I'm not quoting the, the team's quote then. That's that's what that's what the improvements are, shall we say. Not it wasn't sufficient. Um, it was the improvements. So what they did is they forked it and then they designed that we're going to start this and we've just moved to version two. So version one was right, which was pretty much a carbon copy and it was just chain link with different logos and they were trying to inherit it. What's massively different now by V2 is for the last literally 18 months, what they've done is they've looked at the XDC, they've talked to the XDC core community um, and they've talked to everything from myself, which is I'm a moderator validator um, and they've spoken to everyone in between. So from the person who's tweeting and talking about it to the businesses behind it, and they've designed and built an Oracle that matches one focus and description to make XDC network work better and to enable companies and projects to be able to build on XDC, to have a greater understanding of XDC. They've done the understanding by opening the center of excellence in India. And for those who don't know, India tech base and understanding is absolutely phenomenal. Like the, the amount of, you'll see a lot of tech people from that area is just amazing. And, and, and they are like big on blockchain and the area and, and it's something that they really want. So them idolizing that and pushing that that way has been really good for the core team. I mean, most of the core team are from obviously Dubai, um, India and around that area um, of the world. And from that now, they've been able to build and adapt this company for XDC. So what's the so what? And I think we spoke a little bit about this before. What's the so what? Like, why, why bother? And I think that's um, one of two things. One is speed. Um, data has to move at something. I like to always say, it's like what I'm saying is at the speed of relevance, mm -hmm. not at the fastest. So if the, we, yes, there's change that's faster. I think, um, you know, the, a zero, the, there is change that are a lot faster and that's not the point. The point is, how do you have a network and have data that can get to you when you relatively need it? So it's not always about having it in a second. You might have to have a store it somewhere. It's it's about bandwidths. It's so much more than just speed, speed, speed. You'll see a lot of things of TPS on networks. XDC currently runs at 2,000 transactions per second, and it's scalable as well. So that can increase. Right. So And it's by no means a slow network. If you ever used XDC, you, know, you, you click and send, it's there, isn't it? Yeah, it's pretty much instantaneous. Um, so that's where we are now. And recently you, you may have seen in Twitter and it's, if you've been on Twitter and done anything with XTC, you'd have been, um, circulatory finance, CFI, right. Um, and you'll see the partnerships that they're building up in there. And that partnership has been helping build design and then provide data for them. Now, if you're a developer and you want to develop a, a, a D app, you know, decentralized application. And I know they call all these things decentralized applications, but I think the better term I like to use is web free app because they're not all decentralized. They're just web free apps. Correct. Um, well, you don't so want, if you them want to be too. So like, I just want to iterate this for people. I think there's going to be a lot of people that watch this that understand that private permission to use cases where data is siloed and specific to, you know, certain circumstance is beneficial. Like not everything needs to be on a public chain uh, where everybody can view it and see it. Like there, you don't want your social security number on a public chain, right? Um, <laughs> so anyway, continue. Sorry to cut you off. I just- No, no, that's absolutely fine. And then to move on to that, yeah, well, as you know, XCC is hybrid, isn't it? It's got that private chain and people like private and to move slightly off and then come back would be like, if you've got a bank who's doing internal transactions, um, they don't want them. They don't want all their internal transactions. That's why they get audited because let's be honest, they're in competition with the next bank and the next bank and everyone's showing everyone what they're doing. No one's got the upper hand in certain areas or investments and that's not going to work. So there is a need for privacy. You know, there is a need to not have that. And that is you know, it's a purpose and it's a pro and it's a purpose that they've had to make the network hybrid because it's the need case for the market that they've gone into trade finance. It has to be, you have to have points where you go, I'm not showing you this. You only need this, which goes back to our other data thing before data that you need the right amount of data. And like my favorite word is at, at the speed of relevance. Do you know what I mean? And, and that's what's this, this is enabled. And 
and it's still in its infancy. You know, I'm not saying like this is the, you know, it's not the, the be all and end all. And we're not there yet doing these multiple layer of extremely complex systems of systems of smart contracts, but no one is yet. And where they are in XTC is, is about as, you know, the, where they need to be. And for those who don't know, um, it's EVM compatible. What that means is Ethereum virtual machine. So anything deployed on the Ethereum chain can then be use the same base code to use on other chains. Um, XCC, I believe, is um, 50. Somebody's going to get me wrong. Absolutely have me if I get this wrong. But chain ID 50 and then 51 for a perfect. And, you know, and ETH is another number that I don't know because I don't use ETH. But, um, yeah, but it's on the same chain. What that means is that it's very easy for a team to develop say on xdc or ETH, and then move across now what's that enabled us to also is companies like matic a poly you know which is matic turk and polygon um that's what the team's already announced and i've tested that and what they'll do is pli can now use on polygon and matic so all them people now and developers who may not even heard of xdc because you're developers and you know if they're in their own network they're normally quite happy in their own network but and it's difficult if you're building a company or something to go hey let's let's design something from scratch to work on this network when we're already on a network that we're happy with it's like mastercard going hey we're going to go to visa no they're not are they but if there was a chain there that's seamless and was no inherent ben non benefit to them then maybe they could as long as they could make you know the money out of it and the right transactions right well, there's always a benefit, right? So there might be a cheaper way or or something where you could actually make more profit using somebody else's infrastructure. But exactly. you don't exactly. want the exposures that come along with that. So that's when a public network could, could make sense where the transaction between those two parties are enterprise solutions. Um, and so that's why you want the the public and private capabilities of XDC. There's a few other chains that, that allow for that, right? So the XRPL, Casper, yeah. um, HBAR, you know, there's there's certain ones where it's a public and private ecosystem and you can have enterprise solutions that are built on that and but they're interoperable between the public chain. Yeah, and you'll find most of them are aimed at industry based solutions mm -hmm. because it's it's just like the, the the minimum requirement. We need this and this. And then obviously all your um, formalities and regulation sits on that. Like, you know, ISO 20022, that's the messaging standard for finance. You know, that's part of that regulation and that framework and what's going to be obviously added on to that. So, yeah, so then being able to move on to Polygon and then they recently announced uh, Binance as well, you know, Binance Smart Chain, b, &B. Um, Polygon I see as, as a fantastic iteration. Um, I'm actually more excited for b, &B and we like I said before the show, we had a little chat about this, but what I want to iterate is the amount of smart contracts and companies and apps and things on Binance um, is phenomenal, is unreal. And now what you've done is you made this perfect bridge that can now link into connecting networks all together into one hub. So it doesn't matter which network you are, which maxi you are. And the whole point is, like we said, seamless transition. So I want my PLI it could to be wrapped, you know, it could be or maybe on Binance, it could be wrapped or BP PLI, whatever they're going to name it. And they can wrap it, send it across, use it however you like of all the benefits and non-benefits of the network, use it in their own Oracle nodes that are based on Binance, you know, based on that smart chain. And then at the end of it, pull it back off and put it back onto PLI. So there's not an increase of tokens, you know, it's, it's holding up one token on network. And it just means that now one Oracle entity can be used over three networks and more to come as well. It's, it's this is going to be a growing thing. So it won't be like, you know, that maxi scenario of one network it is the interconnect, interconnected data of networks, which is, which is ambitious to say the least. And they're doing it really well. And like I said, the ones that I pulled it off well so far is the competition would be Chainlink. Yeah. But, but with different use cases, like we've spoke about, slightly different use case. So what would give the value or the token value, right? So you're, you're, you're sending data from one place to another, with mm -hmm. volume over the network, right? Yep. Uh, and that's what the token's purpose is. It's a native asset to that network that moves data between ecosystems or people that need that, right? So but the correlation that I make for the average person that, that might be watching this or somebody in the ecosystem that may not like grasp why you need a token for something. Think okay. about, imagine, you know, we went from mail, 
to email, right? And there's an HTTP protocol. There's an email protocol. There's these protocols. Imagine if you could own a piece of that protocol that moved the packets of data. That That is what these tokens are on these mm-hmm. networks. So when he's talking about an Oracle, it's moving that packet of data from wherever it's being created or brought on chain to the smart contract or whatever's going to be using it. So, yeah, yeah. exactly that. And then I think um, obviously people like, you know, not like my mates and stuff, they'll go, oh, what you're, what you're talking about and you're doing. And I think one, a good analogy was um, think about different States. Cause I've, I've been to America. Um, mm-hmm. I've been to see my, my, my brother lives there and I went there and I said, think about, different states and counties and how they operate roads and toll services. Mm-hmm. So when you drive on that road and you want to go into another town or city, yeah, you don't always have to use the, you know, the freeway and the area. You can go through the little cities, you can go through all the congestion, you can get busy, or you can go through the quickest route, pay the toll. And every time you go for the toll, what do you do? You pay that little bit, little yeah. bit. And this is what it's like every time, you know, and every time somebody hits data, and I want to say hits data, it's like every time you look at your phone, um, look at your, um, if you ever got like, you know, your stats on, on a phone or something, you're pulling that data from somewhere like, oh, what's what's the price of Bitcoin? You look at that. Somebody's providing that per hit, you know, per hit. Somebody's, pay, somebody's paying for that. Somebody's having to do that. And, and as a data, as a an app, if you're developing an application, you want to be able to get that, you know, at the best price possible from the most reliable source that's secure. And like I keep saying, at, at the speed of relevance, you know, you want it when somebody's clicking it, right? Um, having now PLI in the market is seriously un- undervaluing um, like what that data is. You know, you're getting it for such a better price, at a faster rate. So I know they're currently still working out more of their price models. It's more of like, you know, they've got companies in there now and it's like a test bed to see how it goes. Um, but I think from the like, say, even gas fees, let's just work on gas fees. The gas fees of Link, um, what was it? I don't even know what it is anymore. What is what is Ethereum's gas fees at the moment in this current market? I mean, it depends bonds. on the volume on the network and how congested it is, right? I mean, as the price goes up and volume on the network increases, the fees and the latency tend to increase with that. And that's why they create these layer twos like Matic and Polygon. They batch a bunch of transactions and leave the Ethereum where it was and then settle it up later on so that they can lower the fees, right? Yeah. Similar. So, now, use- so imagine using that ex- exact same thing, but they don't have to. Now we've got this um, layer one where you don't they have can to. Use, they can use PLI now to bash all them transactions, all that data, mm-hmm. and then they can pull it back off now. So they can put it onto PLI, which is a cheaper, um, cheaper, faster network, aggregate all the data on there, pull it off, and only pay for the one, it would say relatively expensive, you know, so even if it's only like $15, $20. You know, you're talking from fifteen twenty dollars to was it not point not 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 one XDC? You're talking, you know, hundredth of a penny or something. Yeah, hundredth of a penny to be able to transact, and that's just on obviously gas fees alone. Never mind you. Then you've got your company fees on top of that, which I think PLI are aiming for not point one PLI, which at the moment it's four cent a PLI, so that'd be like not point not four cents at the moment. Okay, you know so, what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, so, and, so as, and it's because they're looking at hits. They want people to use it. They want it to be busy. They, they want the hits. They want the thing. And also that market and contracts will change and the price things will go up or down depending on the market, as, as we know, and depending on competition and everything else. But right now, it's probably one of the most value-added data providers in the market. And and they will adapt and change depending on the market. So if, if enough people from Matic want something and that works, they'll adapt. Because that's what they've done so far. They went from version one to version two. The version two is like in, implementing the validator nodes. They cut down the node. They wanted the allocation to drop. So it went from about 2,000 nodes down to like 1,000 because it wasn't needed to be as much because the initial thought of, oh, we need X amount wasn't the case. So they've actually realized, oh, actually, it's more efficient to do it this way and more beneficial for the network. And that's what I like about it. You know, it's, it's adapting. It's not like this is what it has to be. It, we're going to adapt and grow with the network. Well, they're going to Good and bad, right? Because the network's going to have its errors and its stuff, and like XCC will, Matic will, you know, Solana if, if it stays on, um, <laughs> if it stays on long enough to do. But it's, it seems to solve a lot of its problems, so a bit of a zig there. But yeah, but you know, all these things happen, right? And that's what's that's what's really been great to be on the journey of with PLI. Yeah, I, I'm I'm excited about the project. I think that it has. A- and, and, you know, people here in the U.S., we kind of get siloed into 
a certain echo chamber about U.S. projects. And mm -hmm. I mean, the regulation here is it does not foster innovation. I think that there's going to be a lot of companies that are formed overseas where you know what the, the rules of the road are um, yeah. that are able to get to market faster and gain market share. And I think, you know, plug in is one of those. I'll, I'll meet Atul and Ritesh in uh, Dubai next week. Um, we'll have Matic, um, one of the VPs from there. Uh, at the event uh, for the USA UA Alliance as well, and I'm hopeful that you know maybe we can have plug in there if if they are over in that jurisdiction, maybe we can bring them over and and have a conversation with them. Yeah, it's but... they they are based they are based um, over there, so um, obviously I can't speak on behalf of them, but right. I'm sure I'm sure if that if that feel is put out and they've got availability, that that'll be something that's interesting, and um, I'll definitely. Uh, put a word out after this meeting because you know that that's what it's all about and this is what like i said i was at the xtc conference and for me my involvement went literally a hundredfold from that conference because it's different seeing like a digital projection of people online and then coming to the conference and it wasn't like a normal conference and by no way it was a bad means it was like you had like 100 mates that just turned up to somewhere <laughs> and everyone was just so chilled and so nice you know what i mean and everyone was just talking and everyone was interested and everyone was say because we've not had one before. It wasn't, do you know what I mean? It wasn't, it wasn't done before. And it was, it was tight knit. And I think like you said, I, I think as these grow now, you're going to lose a little bit of that because you do, you know, with mass, you, you obviously lose that inherent touch. So, but yeah, I mean, if you're over in Dubai, Matic's there, that happens. I mean, that'd, that'd be absolutely fantastic to be able to put that together. Um, but this is just the start. And I think that's what people got to take it as well. I mean, some people look at like price appreciation, but the contracts are going out, the price is, get, is getting there. And all I'm going to say is once all these start turning on, and it'll go quicker than people expected. Once it starts turning on and all these companies jump on, the drive of wanting this data will be there. The market will be there. It's like any startup. What happens when you first start a startup? It's absolutely chaotic yeah. Um, yeah. for everyone. Hours worked money in is definitely to the you know to the power of something for money you know money uh, from your pocket to money in and um you've got to get through that market and I, I believe now with version two they're there so they're at a really good point to be able to go look we're market ready and and that's that's been really good to see and this is what i'm excited about for the last year without telling anything that i'm not allowed to <laughs> yeah i think it's going to go really well and like you said i think we're early um most people have no clue, you know, about the mm -hmm. changes and the efficiencies that this is going to create in specific use cases. And I love the plain use case for the insurance. I think insurance, like in general, insure tech, um, adopting, you know, blockchain smart contracts, it's just going to remove a lot of the frictions and the, the frustrations that people have with that stuff. Um, and it'll, it'll keep insurance companies a bit more honest, I think. Yeah. I like, so there, there's just one news. I mean, they've got, um, equ equ equity equity edge as well which is like fractionalized ownership of properties that's coming out as well you know and all these things are people um i think fractionalized and real world assets is going to be the next big thing in the next as you can see it's becoming a thing in the next two or three years massively and it's going to ramp up a lot now and we've been talking about that for years i would have thought like you know like being able to tokenize and quantify assets in in a tokenized manner that anyone can literally invest into you know i want to buy a house maybe i don't have the equity for it but i can put 51 percent down and maybe the other 49 could be 49 percent of people on a blockchain that are just investing in my property and then when i do go to sell that property you know there's gonna be contracts and clauses in that but when i do send to it they're gonna earn x amount of profit on that you know and these are the things which you know will, will change like especially property markets you know completely upside down and how it works but in a good way because it'll mean more people have access to um money finance housing and what's going to have to be able to put all this data on on chain you know what i mean there's got to be somebody that's aggregating all this data right yeah you, you got a way you got to have a price feed from the market zillow i mean there's there's tons of applications that already aggregate all this data right um but it's siloed and you got to pay for it if you want it you know i mean that's yep. the inter that's so like you talked about data is gold i i think you're right i think data is the new oil um, and the people that, you know, control it and store it and provide the picks and shovels, are going to make a ton of money over the next decade uh, as people start to use data in a different way. 
Um, but yeah, so to agree with you on the real estate, you know, we're, we're working on a project where we're tokenizing SPVs. I don't think that people will have the ability to tokenize physical products for an extended period of time. Um, I think it should be done at the first layer, but I, I don't think that the regulatory compliance in the way that that'll happen, I think there'll be a layer two. So you'll have a company where you can tokenize the equity in the company that owns the underlying asset that's held by a qualified custodian or a management company or whatever it is. And then um, you'll be able to own equity, uh, tokenized yeah. equity in that company and then be able to trade that and earn income off of it and, and all yeah. the things. And all your realized gains and everything like that. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So it's more, yeah, it's not, yeah, yeah. And, and that's what I didn't really make clear. Not your assets in this term, but being able to, you know, own a part of something through, like you said, through liquidity or unreal, you know, unrealized gains and all, all that market share that, but it's a market that doesn't really, it doesn't exist. Well, it does exist in, you know, specialists. If you're going to redo that now, you, you're not the normal person investing. You know, the, these are it's sort of normal thing. And, and normally you have to have, you know, a very oh, finite, you got to have finite knowledge, aren't you? You've got to have, you've got to be pin, fin pokes and go, that's what I invest in. I understand that market or somebody else does it or have so much money that somebody does it all for you, right? But there's there's an, SM, there's an SME um, and that's what it does. It's going to not remove them. They're still obviously going to be needed, probably more demand because there's going to be companies that are going to be relying on them to manage this for them. Mm -hmm. um, but it means that the average person now yeah, can be a part of that. To yeah which then that's... or or ways yeah. to build wealth you know like if you, right now if you don't have a hundred thousand or a quarter million dollars or fifty thousand dollars at a minimum to throw in on stuff if you get more than 35 people on a cap table it is just a nightmare to manage um and especially dealing you know i i love um retail investors i have a really strong passion for helping people you know, beyond broke, we want to help a million people become financially free through the mastermind group there. Um, but most people that, you know, are just getting started out, they might only have five or 10 grand. And then they may not even be an accredited investor to have the capability to get access to this stuff. But I think it'll democratize markets, you know, and I, I think the SEC is starting to see that. And so that's why they're starting to migrate toward a test for people to become accredited here in the US. They're in, in you're in the UK. Is that correct? Yeah, I'm in the UK, yes. Yeah, so you guys have terms for a sophisticated investor. Um, you can qualify that through like five different means. You know, if you, you participate in a certain industry or have an expertise in a certain domain for a period of time, you can showcase that you do have that expertise, and then you qualify as sophisticated and you can invest in that niche, right? Um, and I think that's what you're talking about. You you might You have to have that specialized knowledge. It's not just open. Or people can and and i think that that's probably a better way to go about it too you should you should understand the risks associated with an investment before you make it but i do think it there there needs to be more open access like there was prior to 1930 um and the sec invoking you know all the rules that we have now so um if if people want to find you um where can they follow you at and then um kind of plug whatever you got going on man if um you know, you want to talk about the, the long-term vision for plug-in or yourself or where, where are you headed? Yeah. So for, for me, it's just like, I'm just pure and I'm pure, just like, um, what to say, like, like good, like what feels right. Do you know what I mean? What feels right. And yeah. like plugging felt right to me. I felt like it was a need. And so now, and then I, I wanted, by no means did I want to like help or, you know, be part of that team. Um, I was just wanted to just do something. And, and then it fell in place that I was, and I was like, wow. And I'd say to anyone who's trying to get into this space or interested is just whatever showcase or skills you've got, if that's, you know, social, if that's, um, you know, advertising, if that's whatever, just do that. Provide do that. what you're going to, and, and, you, and you'll you'll find something. I've seen some uh, moderators are literally working full-time moder moderating uh, like telegrams and, you know, socials and things like that. And they were like, I didn't think this was a job. I were doing this like, you know, doing this for doing fun, for and I, I'm I'm getting yeah, I'm getting I'm getting paid for it, or or you know they're invested into it, and the companies have now took them on and employed them, and and it's it's like a brand new way of getting a, your CV done by just proving through you know proof of work. Yeah. Um. And and I'd say that's for anyone. For myself, it's just carry on with the network. Um. See see how it's going to grow. Um. You know, stay with PLI. Um. I've been. You know, I'm I'm really excited about what's coming up. But you know, we've got some really good projects on there: Globian, CFI, um, 
X swap and um, Comtech Gold, you know, like all these projects that when yet again PLI and the smart contracts and the developers come, all these are going to be lifted vertically up because that's what they need. That's what the the DEXs and everything needs. And you know, and for me in the next five years, I'm just going to see that as ex- exponential growth. And where XDC, and this is what what people won't realize is when trade finance and this, because it's getting adopted more and more, you know, like it's in the UK law now. And um, it's actually been said, Jinfin's part of like, it's on like the government page that they were testing, you know, and people miss this out. And even if they don't, the, the significance of that is once you're a trusted government entity, um, governments are quite weird out there because once they trust one, they tend to trust none. <laughs> I think that, that's literally how we that's say it works. You got trust one. Done. Yeah. Yeah, they trust one, trust none, which means once they trust one entity, it's very hard for another entity to be able to help out because, because you know, they're very much, they'll build they'll build their entire pro, um, policy and everything okay, around okay. that. And then for another entity to come in, they're like, we don't know you. And that bond of trust in a very mature system takes years and years to build. Yeah. And I think people are, uh, like trade finance with, you know, well, finance itself with XRP, you know, with the, the, with the ledger and everything. And you're looking at that and they're trying to get into a very, very, one of the most mature system in ever. Do you know what I mean? And it's, and it's multiple facets. So what they're doing and people about price appreciation, like what they're doing is fantastic. The deals are fantastic, but it's going to take time. And in the next five years, I think we'll see a shift in that. And that's why I'm excited from PLI and XTC, because I think that, It'll get to a point where you won't even know it's blockchain. You won't know what's what you're doing. It'll be abs- absolutely normal. And all the trade finance, or majority of it, will be running on XDC or a version of XDC. Because remember, this can change. So it could be an EVM. It could be another type of it. But it'll be a type of XDC. And for me, that's where I that's where I see it going. And that's what I'm excited for. Yeah, I love that, man. I, I think that, like you said, you know, we're super early. And um, the people that are here now that understand the the transformative power of what Web3 is and these, you know, the protocols and the applications and the tokens, smart contracts, you're, you're way ahead of the curve. If you're watching this video, like you're way <laughs> ahead of the curve. Um, and, you know, if, if you haven't, you know, nothing here is financial advice. I just want to say that. Um, John was nice enough to come on and, and kind of give his perspective. And obviously he has biases and so do I. So do your own research, check out XTC, check out plugin. Um, and thank you for coming on brother and sharing your perspective with, uh, with the audience. Uh, if, again, if you guys want to check him out, he's DeFi John on Twitter and um, yeah, just, you know, Ooh. we'll have to have you back on after uh, things, things happen in the bull run. Um, and maybe some of the other stuff you, you know about comes to light. So. Yeah, maybe maybe not just after the bull run because there'll be everyone will be the uh, with the uh, there'll be the hard season when it all when it all yeah. when it all comes down again. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, appreciate you coming on and uh, appreciate everybody watching, and we'll see y'all on the next one.